Greetings, everybody. Chaplain Bob Walker here, Light of the World Ministries in John 8, 12. Jesus said, I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. This is going to be the end of the Ezekiel series, uh, Ezekiel chapter 48. This is going to kind of be a part A. I'm going to cover... Well, in part B, I'm going to cover the um, the gates to the New Jerusalem and mention the 144,000. A lot of people wonder, why is Dan missing from the 144,000? That's a good question. I'm going to attempt to uh, shed a little light on that. So we'll see what happens. So let's do Ezekiel 48 first, and uh, we'll take a look at Revelation chapter 7 and then 21. All right, Ezekiel 48, verse 1. Now these are the names of the tribes, tribes. You know, Isaiah and Ezekiel, towards their end chapters, are very similar to what Revelation is. In Revelation 20, 21, and 22, talks about the kingdom and New Jerusalem. And Isaiah and the end of Ezekiel do the same similar, well, similar type thing. Now these are the names of the tribes from the north end to the coast of the way of Hethlon, as one goeth to Hamath, Hazra Enon, the border of Damascus, northward to the coast of Hamath, for these are his sides, east and west, a portion for Dan. We're going to do a little bit of study on Dan. Because people say, oh, well, you know, Dan's not in the 144,000 that are sealed. So Dan's not going to be there. Eh, I don't know about that, but verse 2. And by the border of Dan, from the east side unto the west side, a portion for Asher. Now, Dan's one of the 12 tribes. Asher is another one. And by the border of Asher, from the east side, even unto the west side, a portion for Naphtali, another of the tribes. And by the border of Naphtali, from the east side, unto the west side, a portion for Manasseh. Manasseh was one of the two sons of Joseph. You know, Joseph went into Egypt, became one of the top guys under Pharaoh. Yeah, he had two sons and by the border of Manasseh from the east side unto the west side a portion for Ephraim and that was the second son of Joseph so he's getting Joseph is getting a double portion there's kind of a reason for that uh, Reuben uh, did one of his dad's uh, concubines, if I remember correctly, you know, he had uh, Rachel and Leah, and then he had Bilhah, and I forget the name of the other one, but he had two concubines and two uh, two wives, and uh, Reuben decided he wanted to get him some, and he took care of the problem, I guess you could say. And that's probably partly, I would say that's probably part of his dad's and mom's mistake. Because, you know, when a guy starts looking around at women and, you know, hey, it's time to find him a wife, right? So, I don't know. But still, sleeping with one of your dad's concubines is not a good thing. So, he was... Uh, I think he was the firstborn, if memory serves me correctly. 
So he was uh, gave up the birthright that way. If memory serves me correctly, I could be wrong about that. Uh, let's see. Where was I? Verse 5, And by the border of Manasseh, from the east side unto the west side, a portion for Ephraim. And by the border of Ephraim, from the east side, even unto the west side, a portion for Reuben. And by the border of Reuben, from the east side unto the west side, a portion for Judah. That's the tribe that Christ came from. That was the tribe of the kings. And by the border of Judah, from the east side unto the west side, shall be the offering which he shall offer of five and twenty thousand reeds in breadth, and in length as one of the other parts, from the east side unto the west side, and the sanctuary shall be in the midst of it. The oblation that ye shall offer unto the Lord shall be of five and twenty thousand in length, and of ten thousand in breadth. Now remember, Levi was not to be given a portion of land for an inheritance because they were to do the service of the Lord and the Lord was their inheritance. And where do we find that, Chaplain Bob? Oh, real simple. Joshua chapter 13 and verse 14. Only unto the tribe of Levi he gave none inheritance. The sacrifices of the Lord God of Israel made by fire are their inheritance, as he said unto them. Joshua 13, 33. But unto the tribe of Levi, Moses gave not any inheritance. The Lord God of Israel was their inheritance, as he said unto them. All right, back to Ezekiel 48, verse 9. The oblation that ye shall offer unto the Lord shall be of five and twenty thousand in length, and of ten thousand in breadth. And for them, even for the priests, shall be this holy oblation toward the north, five and twenty thousand in length, and toward the west, ten thousand in breadth, and toward the east, ten thousand in breadth, and toward the south, five and twenty thousand in length. And the sanctuary of the Lord shall be in the midst thereof. So the sanctuary is in the middle of all these uh, areas of the tribes, if I am gathering this correctly. So God's in the middle, so to speak. Verse 11. It shall be for the priests that are sanctified of the sons of Zadok, which have kept my charge, which went not astray when the children of Israel went astray, as the Levites went astray. And this oblation of the land that is offered shall be unto them a thing most holy by the border of the Levites. And over against the border of the priests, the Levites shall have five and twenty thousand in length and ten thousand in breadth, all the length shall be five and twenty thousand, and the breadth ten thousand. And they shall not sell of it. Uh, you're, you're, you can't sell your land. Uh-uh. And they shall not sell of it, neither exchange nor alienate the first fruits of the land, for it is holy unto the Lord. And the five thousand that are left in the breadth over against the five and twenty thousand shall be a profane place for the city for dwelling and for suburbs, and the city shall be in the midst thereof. And these shall be the measures thereof, the north side 4,500, and the south side 4,500, on the east side 4,500, and on the west side 4,500. You know, everybody, all these measurements and stuff, I have not a clue. Because I would expand, uh, ex, you know, expound upon it if I knew, but I don't. You know, maybe a Levite one day can shed some light on this, but I don't know. And uh, who knows? No telling what tribe I am. 
Verse 17. And the suburbs of the city shall be toward the north 250, and toward the south 250, and toward the east 250, and toward the west 250. And the residue in length over against the oblation of the holy portion shall be 10,000 eastward and 10,000 westward, and it shall be over against the oblation of the holy portion, holy portion, and the increase thereof shall be for food unto them that serve the city. All right, let's do verse 19. And they that serve the city shall serve it out of all the tribes of Israel. You know, it's funny when you read about the New Jerusalem, there is no 13th Gentile gate. All these Baptists that think, well, you know, we're, we can't be Israel. Why, well, the Antichrist over in the Middle East, they're Israel. Well, at least they call themselves that. But uh, I don't think, uh, well, <laughs> I don't think they know what they're talking about. What can I tell you? And I think they're going to be shocked when they find out the real deal. Of course, they're going to be shocked when they find out that they're going to have to deny Christ or get their heads cut off by the very people whom they blessed. You know, the ones that cursed Jesus. Yeah. Verse 20, all the oblation shall be five and 20,000 by five and 20,000. Ye shall offer the holy oblation four square with the possession of the city. And the residue shall be for the prince on the one side and on the other of the holy oblation and of the possession of the city over against the five and 20,000 of the oblation toward the east border and westward over against the five and 20,000 toward the west border over against the portions for the prince and it shall be the holy oblation and the sanctuary of the house shall be in the midst thereof. Verse 22. Moreover, from the possession of the Levites, the priest tribe, right? The Levites, and from the possession of the city, being in the midst of that which is the princes, between the border of Judah and the border of Benjamin, shall be for the prince. Now remember, Benjamin was uh, Joseph's younger brother. As for the rest of the tribes, from the east side unto the west side, Benjamin shall have a portion. And by the border of Benjamin, from the east side unto the west side, Simeon shall have a portion. And by the border of Simeon, from the east side unto the west side, Issachar, a portion. Now, all these names are of the tribes. And by the border of Issachar, from the east side unto the west side, Zebulun, a portion. And by the border of Zebulon, from the east side unto the west side, Gad, a portion. And by the border of Gad, at the south side, southward, the border shall be even from Tamar unto the waters of Strife in Kadesh, and to the river toward the great sea. This is the land which ye shall divide by lot, unto the tribes of Israel for inheritance, and these are their portions, saith the Lord God. And these are the goings out of the city on the north side, 4,500 measures. Listen to this, verse 31. And the gates of the city, what city? New Jerusalem. And the gates of the city shall be after the names of the tribes of Israel. Yeah, that 13th Gentile gate, right? That's uh, that's in your uh, Baptist Bible College cemetery. I mean, seminary or whatever. Yeah. And the gates of the city shall be after the names of the tribes of Israel. Three gates northward. One gate of Reuben. One gate of Judah, one gate of Levi. 
And at the east side, 4,503 gates, one gate of Joseph. Now remember, Joseph had two children, Manasseh and Ephraim. They were given each a portion, but there's only one gate for both of them. So, and one gate of Joseph, one gate of Benjamin, one gate of Dan. Dan, Dan the man. You know, Dan's not in the 144,000, but he has a gate here. There's people tell you that, oh, Dan was divorced. God threw him away. They're in the garbage can. They're gone. That's it. Psst. Yeah, I'm not so sure about that. Verse 33. And at the south side, 4,500 measures and three gates. One gate of Simeon, one gate of Iskar, one gate of Zebulun. And uh, if memory serves me correctly, Zebulun, if you look at the prophecies of Zebulun, um, you know what country fits Zebulun the most? It seems like uh, Holland or the Netherlands. I think Holland is a major province in the Netherlands, if I remember correctly. I think that's how that works. People call the country Holland, but it's like their major province. But it's the Netherlands. So, I don't know. I think, I think. So, one gate of Simeon, one gate of Iskar, one gate of Zebulun. You know, the Dutch. At the west side... 4,500 with their three gates, one gate of Gad, one gate of Asher, and one gate of Naphtali. It was round about 18,000 measures, and the name of the city from that day shall be, The Lord is There. How's that for a name of a city? The Lord is There. Jerusalem, city of peace, right? Oh, yeah. So, yeah, something like that. All right, well, everybody, that's uh, Ezekiel 48. Sort of kind of the end of this series, but I'm going to do uh, something on Dan. But another thing to consider, too, um, like I mentioned, I'm on Gab right now, G-A-B, and we're going to see what happens with World Truth videos. But uh, I'm not real crazy about Gab. Uh, some They got Alex Jonestein on there, and Milo, that uh, you-know-who-ish uh, sodomite, who joking, was joking about uh, having fun with 13-year-old boys in the bedroom. Yeah. Yeah, they got a group that's all for that kind of stuff. They got in trouble in the U.S., so they went over to Germany. Uh, N-A-M, N-A-M, and then the last letters are B-L-A. Yeah, it stands for North American Man. And then the last stands for uh, Boy Love Association. So they think uh, 20, 30, 40 year old men should be able to uh, teach uh, young boys uh, about their ways, if you catch my drift. So, and everybody, I'm on. Chaplain Bob at protonmail.com. Just in case uh, Google deletes my Gmail account, because I would lose all my contacts. And they've been known to do that before. Sometimes when they, I've heard people say that when they delete your uh, YouTube channel, sometimes they delete your email that's associated with it if it's with uh, Google. So, you know, that's my alternate. So, yeah, try to get me uh, your 
Well, if you want copies of all my work, let me know. I'll send them to you or whatever. We'll figure something out. Would appreciate it if you'd uh, send me uh, an SD card if you're outside of the United States. Uh, SD cards work best because I can mail that in a regular envelope. But uh, a USB uh, will work inside the U.S., but it's a pain in the rear to go to the post office and have to fill out a customs form for a stinking USB uh, to mail outside the United States. So that's why I prefer to use an SD card. I can just stick it in an envelope, tape it to a piece of paper, and mail it off, and it always seems to get through. So basically, if you can stick it in an envelope, you don't need to do a customs form. That's the law as I understand it. So, but, uh, yeah. So kind of keep that in mind, you know. And uh, I'm going to do a thing on Dan. And uh, it's getting to the point there's just nowhere else to go as far as doing Bible studies. I mean, I spent months months loading stuff to different places. I mean, I even had an audio site. I think it was Sermon Index. I can't remember. It was actually a paid audio site that I was paying for. A quote, unquote, Christian site that I was paying for. And they deleted my channel. You know, quoting Jesus is anti-Semitic. Don't you know that? Oh, yeah. Yeah, so you will toe the line. Yeah, they don't really care about getting money from us. They're getting money from the you-know-whos. But uh, it's like bit shoot, worthless, you know. They're muting the audio on my, my uh, Bible studies. And Brighteon, same thing. I, I'm just about at the point to give up because there is just about nowhere to go. So, what can I tell you? But yeah, anybody wants all my uh, Bible studies for future reference, let me know. I've got written studies, audio studies, and I've got videos. And uh, if you want to load them somewhere, I don't copyright anything. Nothing. Everything's to the glory of Christ. And like I say, if, if I'm doing this for money... I'm doing a really lousy job because I'm not making hardly any money at all. So, yeah, just kind of keep that in mind, you know. But I'm uh, going to try to warn everybody is until they either throw me in a camp or kill me or whatever. Revelation 12. Uh, the woman goes you know where. And the woman's the church. Idiots want you, pre-trib idiots want you to think the woman's the Antichrist over in the Middle East. I don't think so. No, they're the whore. They're the whore. There's a difference. The Lord's coming back for a virgin bride, not a whore. And churches just can't get that through their brain. So, all right. Well, uh, stay tuned for uh, the Dan thing. You know, we, you know, I did Ezekiel 48. And this mentions the, um, the gates for the tribes. But I'm going to go more into detail for that on the next study. So, all right, well, all blessings, praise, glory, and honor to God the Father and His only begotten Son, the Lamb of God slain from the foundation of the world. In Jesus' name, all blessings, praise, glory, and honor. Amen.